Heads up. Heads up. Yeah, because we freaked out one of the Lyft drivers when we did it yesterday, so. Why? <laughs> just because we get really excited all of a sudden. Very excited. Just a heads up. Hi guys, I'm here with my best friend Coral Belton, and we are going to see Rose. place on earth. Yes, more than Disney World, SEMA is amazing. Basically, if you like anything about cars or the automotive industry, you're going to love SEMA. I spent three days there. Thank you so much to my best friend, Cora. She was awarded the SEMA scholarship and we got in together. Thank you for sharing your ticket with me. It is amazing. Day one was essentially spent just getting to understand the layout via the map three buildings, at least five or six different sec sec sections of stuff, including an entire outdoor tent area, huge car show. You have everything from NHRA, NASCAR, all the series booths, to aftermarket, race parts, upgrades, in oldies, vintage, customs, concept cars, news publications, TV shows, everything there. It was huge. I felt like every time I walked it, I saw something new, and we just kind of snaked through part of it. A lot of it was also spent meeting people that I never thought I'd get to meet, standing in a lot of lines. Highlights, especially taking everything in, just the sheer magnitude of how big SEMA was, but also meeting some cool people. This is, he looks literally just like his picture, Magnus Walker, the urban outlaw, not your typical Porsche driver. This guy was really cool to meet. Talked a little bit about mechanical engineering. Magnus Walker with the coolest stickers ever. Like these are these are sick. I want stickers like this. Also met Richard Petty, most beautiful signature in my opinion in all of racing. I got him to sign my SEMA badge. I'm going to be honest, my fav meeting my favorite guys of the day. If you guys have ever watched Roadkill, it's kind of my dad's and I's favorite show. They just build crazy stuff. That is David Freiberger and Mike Finnegan. Roadkill YouTube show. They had this truck there, Stubby. Big wheelie truck. Cool stuff. Um, just a really great day. Day one was just basically taking in who was there, what was there, how big the place was, getting through that, oh my gosh, how am I going to see everything, what do I want to see, you think you know what you want, and then you go there and it's so big that it's hard to take it on, and so that was day one of SEMA. Day two ended up being a ton more productive, had a much better idea of what I wanted to see, who I wanted to see, met some more really cool people, and really walked the area, went down and really checked out the Toyota booth, they had a really cool um, kind of period timeline of cars, outside and inside love looking at those they also had like a little talk show going on they were hard to hear though over the mass amounts of people in the building but that was awesome spent some time checking out the outdoor area which was like a huge car show huge car show and they had this big tapered off area that was a, like a drift center and they were taking people out but they also had professional drivers come in <laughs> trucks out there. It was basically the off-road trucks, street trucks, and every kind of JDM modded car you can possibly imagine. This awesome rock band called Good Boy Daisy, and it was pretty much an all-girls band, which was not what I was expecting and totally cool. Highlights of day two in the morning. First thing we went to a talk with Lynn, um, a member of the board from SEMA, as well as Julia Luttinger, about how the garage is changing and STEM and engineering changing. That was a really interesting talk. Met some really cool people. There were a ton of female racers in that room. Right after the talk, got to go meet Mario Andretti, someone, again, that I never thought I'd be able to meet. What's really cool is I'm looking through the pictures that were taken of me kind of talking to him, and he's smiling in every single picture. That's one thing I can say about Mario Andretti and Richard Petty. Those were two of the friendliest 
people. Another highlight was walking through the Exalta tent outside. They had guys that were custom pinstriping and painting these little pedal cars. And you could sit there and watch the entire process and then go out and look at them. They are just absolutely beautiful. These guys are master craftsmen. Probably the best part of the entire day was meeting Danny Thompson, especially right after he just had, he just made this huge accomplishment of breaking a land speed record, 406.7 miles per hour. Absolutely incredible and getting to meet and talk with him and even talk with him, I didn't even know Danny had raced sprint cars at Ascot and just how it felt. He said you had to back the thing in halfway down the straightaway on a half mile. I can't even imagine. I wish I was there to see Ascot. That was definitely by far the highlight of my day and maybe even the entire SEMA show. Huge shout out to the guys at Boosted Power Sports. They had this really cool Paisley Street Legal Polaris. They actually helped us get a lift back to our hotel. They shared one with us because getting lifts after SEMA is crazy. So big shout out to those guys. Go check them out on Instagram and on Twitter. They're really awesome. Day three. Day three pretty much rounded the entire trip off. I went to a lot of places I hadn't been the entire show, including discovering an entire off-road building. Yes, off-road, the Fox Racing Shocks booth, basically just me drooling on everything from small body shocks to new stuff in the Baja and extreme off-road. Whew, beautiful stuff. Check it out, they had a ton of Jeeps, everything from Jeeps to camping equipment and outdoor accessories. It was really cool and I'm so, upset that I didn't get to spend at least a good hour or two walking through there. That same building that had all the off-road stuff also had new products haul, like this new product showcase from A to Z, everything from accessories to performance enhancements to new programming technology and computer systems and tuning kits and I mean everything. It was absolutely incredible. Very cool wall. I wish I would have had more time to look at that stuff too. While I was outside, probably one of my favorite things was checking out the Seeming Youth Initiative. They had a engine building contest for high schoolers. These big teams, I think it was at least 10 students. They had to completely rebuild an engine from the ground up as fast as they could. Watching them do that was super cool. Here's a quick video shot of it. <laughs> Got to end day three and end SEMA hanging out with the coolest people. The guys at Permatex are so much fun. They're so enthusiastic about what they do. Check them out at Permatex USA on Instagram and at Permatex on Twitter and Permatex on Facebook. They shared a ton of stuff from SEMA, including live videos, pictures. I know they were interacting with fans. They had some really cool contests going on. So privileged to get to work with those guys and get to share their products because they're great products. Here's some really cool pictures. I'm telling you, these guys were fun. Best way to end the entire show. Biggest takeaways. One, I work with the coolest people in the coolest industry. Racing is amazing. Just the tradition meets the modern, meets the concept and the outrageous, the fast, the crazy, the slow and consistent, the precision, everything about racing and the people involved in it, everything about the automotive industry is just incredible and it's such a blessing to get to work in it and get to work with these guys and be a part of everything that they do. Number two, we need to get more kids involved. The age of the guys in the trades is getting older. I know that the age limit used to be 21. I think it's 16 now. I know there were a couple kids there that I saw walking around. We need more kids involved, hands-on, in the garage, building things. We need to expand our education. So that was one thing I did notice. And number three, the final thing, the garage is changing. I was told that before I came to SEMA that SEMA was the largest model one of the largest model showcases in the entire world, that being female models, but there really wasn't any one there. There, I mean, there were models there, but there really wasn't very many. And there were a lot of women, a lot of female engineers, a lot of females with the different businesses and at the different booths working that were just industry representatives and industry heads and leaders 
so I thought that was really cool. The garage scene is changing. The automotive scene is changing. Women are coming. Um, yeah, that was SEMA. Incredible, amazing trip. So blessed to get to go. Huge thank you again to Cora. I hope you guys like the post that I made, and I hope you guys enjoy this video. All the different cars. If you have questions, please comment below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because there's lots of stuff coming this next season. Thank you guys again so much. Make sure you're following me for updates on what's happening in 2017 at Abigs Racing on Instagram, Abigs Racing on Twitter, Ariel Biggs Racing on Facebook. Thank you guys so much. And as always, be relentless and push 110%. Thank you, everyone.